We grew up in Graeby Street. Uh, I, I have wonderful childhood memories where we would, where we would play uh, till dusk, from dawn to dusk, and play in the streets, play rugby, uh, and it, it was just it was just a very nice time growing up. Uh, it was bad times, uh, but also good times. Uh, my parents divorced when I was in standard three, I think, in standard four, so that was a bit traumatic for me. But I remember, you know, our holidays would be me coming to visit my aunts in, in Charleston Neal. So that was uh, growing up. My last year at primary school was also in the 80s, you know, where, where oh. the boycott started and the student unrest. And uh, I was intrigued and drawn into uh, the sense of injustice. I know the first students that were arrested in the country were arrested in Paul. Uh, Lloyd Fortain and Michael Crail. So, uh, and I used to visit my cousins and they attended there and I admired their courage and their stance against injustice. I was introduced to my high school teacher, uh, was this young teacher from George, J.J. Uh, Williams. And he challenged us to think differently about life and society. He introduced us to Martin Luther King, he introduced us to Mother Teresa and he made us write essays on poverty and he made us to question, I had wonderful English teachers who taught us critical thinking. So we, we were continuously being stimulated to think differently about uh, life and about society and to question these things and to ask questions and to, you know, one of the things that he taught us, a lie cannot live forever, truth crushed will rise again. What we did, uh, that's why I like reggae music such a lot, and was shaped by Bob Marley, uh, is that we would analyze poetry. You know, we would analyze, for example, a redemption song. And we had awareness programs where we would analyze these songs and critically look at it. And, and that really shaped me in a, in a big way. Uh, my five years at Space Boner uh, in Athlone. I initially hated it. I absolutely hated teaching. I just couldn't get a grip on these children, you know. And one of my colleagues says, you know, you must be rude with them. You must be authoritarian, you know. And the more I tried it, the more I hated it, you know. And I thought, my goodness, you know, there must be something else. And then another colleague told me, no, man, you must need to build a relationship with these children. Win their hearts. Uh, and when I tried that, I began to love it. I absolutely love teaching. I love the idea of being able to shape young minds, being able to influence them, introducing them to my world. You know, I made. I then decided to be exactly my history teacher that I was uh, that I was exposed to. At that time, I've never actually stopped studying. Uh, I then decided to enroll for a bachelor's degree in education. I think I had ulterior motives because there was a girl that I was chasing at the time and she was at the university and I thought maybe I was, uh, I was teaching but I wanted this girl as well. So I enrolled and then during the course of this course that I did, uh, just an excuse to see her, I was asked to do an assignment on alternative education and I wrote used academics to write a, a community center. There was no community center at that time. So through our interaction as youth, we, we met every Thursday evening for Bible study group, and that evolved uh, where we started to put meat around it. One Saturday afternoon, my friends and I, we were in uh, my room listening to jazz uh, in this you, jazz music, and one of the bands that we liked, a Christian band, was called Koinonia, which means uh, fellowship, it's a Greek word. So we said we want to use something that is, doesn't offend Afrikaans-speaking or English-speaking or Tosa-speaking people. Let's use this word Koinonia because it, it summarizes what it is that we want to be, bring people together into a caring uh, uh, ambit and where people share with one another 
their life, pains, joys, happiness, and, and, and all of that. Worst, we were 25, 30 on a Thursday evening. At our best, we were 80 to 100 young people. For about 10, 12 years, we managed to mobilize people. And I involved my school kids, and I influenced them, and it, it, was, it, it, was, it was good. It, it, was a, it, was a, it was a spirit in my life that shaped me. It, it gave me uh, my faith. It gave me direction, it gave me purpose, it gave me new meaning. I, I, I was passionate and still am passionate about development and about people and what it is that we can do. Because you see, the, the main thing is that as black people in this country, we're still just playing catch up. You know, we're still trying to make, we're still trying, as soon as we get there, the, the boundaries have again been shifted. So uh, uh, I was moved by this. We have faced a backlog and I want us to be all that we can be. And I found that all that we could be in my relationship with Christ. That, is, that was what I discovered uh, whilst teaching in the, in the 90s. So in this process of, uh, in this process of exp experimenting with different programs, uh, we stumbled on radio, uh, and, and Radio Casey is next year, is 20 years young. It has been one of the uh, nicest projects that I've ever been involved in. Most rewarding, challenging on so many different levels. But we said we want to create something that binds this community. You know, radio is a powerful means to bring people together, people to share stories, and that is, yeah. I, I dream of a united fall uh, community. People don't, you know, we were sold this, uh, the apartheid strategy worked very well of divide and rule. So it made, it, it made us subscribe to this four nation theory of there are four nations in one. So you are better because you are white, but I'm slightly better than him because he's black. And I'm by their definition colored, which I am not, I am black. So this, this social engineering made people to not look at people as people, but look at people in terms of hair and fair and complexion. And we've been sold this, you know. And now all of a sudden we've got people from the rest of Africa coming to South Africa as well. And uh, we are, some of us are even struggling to connect with them. But we haven't even started connecting with one another after 350 years of colonization and social engineering. So there's a lot that needs to be done to build social cohesion and to build relationship with one another, that people accept one another as people.